NNPC Limited and its joint venture partner, Chevron Nigeria Limited, are a production target of 165,000 barrels per day by December 2024. Now, this comes after the conversion of five JV assets into the partnership terms stipulated by the Petroleum Industry Act. That's our major story today. Hello and welcome to the program. This is Energy and You, a show that brings you developments in the energy sector. We focus on the activities of NNPC Limited. I'm Erosa Higumbo. Also on this episode, the National Energy Company leverages on the PIA terms for sustainable initiatives in meeting its strategic goals as world-class company of choice. Details of these and other stories in just a moment. Please join us again. Hello again. Well, we'll start off the show with top energy stories for the week. States in Nigeria have continued to key into the federal government's gas initiative by adopting compressed natural gas, CNG, to fuel automobiles. The government of Oshun State announced that its administration has been actively implementing CNG conversion and adoption initiative for the past eight months. The initiative, aimed at modernizing the state's transportation system, includes plans to convert the state-run Imole buses to CNG-powered vehicles, offering a more sustainable and cost-effective alternative to traditional fuel. The governor of Oshun State, Ademola Adeliki, revealed that his administration is working in collaboration with NNPC Limited and other stakeholders to ensure the success of the initiative. The expansion is expected to enhance the existing transport palliative system, which has been providing essential services to residents of the state. Oil prices rose in Asian trade earlier this week, following expectations of a U.S. interest rate cut, though gains were capped by persistent demand worries and weaker China data. Brent crude futures for November were up $0.38 cents at $71.99 a barrel. U.S. crude futures for October were up $0.49 cents at $69.14 a barrel. Both contracts had settled lower in the previous session, with concerns about supply disruptions easing after production resumed at the Gulf of Mexico. This is following hurricane Francine and rising data, which showed a weekly rise in U.S. rig counts. Apollo Global Management has signed a $1 billion deal with British energy major BPPLC to fund its stake in the Trans-Adriatic Natural Gas Pipeline. That's according to a Bloomberg News report. With the deal in place, Apollo Global has a non-controlling stake in the BP subsidiary, which holds the oil and gas company's 20% stake in the pipeline. The deal lets BP maintain its governance control over the entity. Proceeds from the deal will contribute to BP's 2024 divestment and other proceeds, a target of $2 to $3 billion, which is part of the company's disciplined financial frame. The deal is expected to close in the fourth quarter. You're watching Energy and You. Now, NNPC Limited and its joint venture partner, Chevron Nigeria Limited, have concluded the conversion of five of its joint assets. This is in line with the provisions of the 2021 Petroleum Industry Act, which provides for transiting of assets from the petroleum profit tax into PIA terms. In a brief ceremony, a memorandum of understanding was signed with representation of management from the two companies. This marks a significant step towards increasing domestic gas supply and expanding global market presence. Energy and you cover the event. The signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding MOU on the transfer of the joint partnership assets had in attendance the management of NNPC Limited led by the Group Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Milikari, and the Director, Deepwater and Production Sharing Contract, Chevron Nigeria Limited, Mrs. Michelle Fluger. The document signed signifies the conclusion on the conversion of five oil mining leases, OMLs, into four petroleum prospecting licenses, PPLs, 
and 26 petroleum mining leases PMLs in line with the new regime of the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, for transiting assets from the Petroleum Profit Tax, PPT, to the PIA terms. Mr. Melikari described Chevron Nigeria as one of the most reliable partners for NNPC Limited. Whilst pointing out the benefits of the partnership in expanding Nigeria's footprint in the domestic and export gas markets. Chevron is one of the most uh, reliable partners. I will look forward to doing many more great things with, with Chevron. Of course, uh, it's one of our partners that is not contemplating living in uh, the shallow waters. And we're proud of this and uh, we'll continue to say that uh, Chevron is our partner of choice. And we'll do more things with you as we build these assets into more value, create more value out of these assets. And not only that, to, to expand our footprint in the domestic gas market, including the export market. We're already talking to you. He commended the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, for its exemplary role in midwifing the conversion. The director deporter and production sharing contract, Chevron Nigeria Limited, Mrs. Michelle Fuga, also stressed on the significance of the conversion for both companies, affirming Chevron's long-standing commitment to the assets. CNL has a desire to be a partner in these assets for the long term, and conversion of these assets under PIA was an important step for all of us. And I am looking forward to continued collaboration uh, on these JV assets, and I'm really excited to be here today taking that first step. So thank you. Also speaking, NNPC's Executive Vice President Upstream, Mrs. Orisha Meiwa Eyson, highlighted the advantages of the PIA terms over the previous Petroleum Profit Tax PPT terms, noting that the conversion was a strategic move towards the successful implementation of the PIA. Today we see that um, indeed all the efforts by all the stakeholders in the process is culminating to uh, executing the conversion. And at this point, we really must appreciate the regulators, uh, um, NUPRC, who has had held us through the process, guided us through the process, and today we are, culmi we are culminating here to execute the first JV conversion. I think this is really noteworthy, and we must appreciate the support we've received from the leadership of NNPC and CNL as well to get us to this point. In his remarks, the Chief of Stream Investment Officer NNPC Upstream Investment Management Services, Mr. Balawanti, noted that the asset conversion is expected to significantly boost crude oil production, with the two partners focusing on attaining the 165,000 barrels of oil per day production target by the end of year 2024. We are part of the uh, network stability that we have across the entire domestic gas supply. And we are also facilitating the export of gas into the work Africa, our African coast. That wouldn't have been possible without the very prudent operational philosophy of Chevron. Uh, we continue to collaborate with them very strongly. And it's our expectation that going forward with this, uh, it will incentivize us to move quickly, very quickly, to achieve the 165,000 liquid production target. The successful conversion of the NNPC Chevron JV assets into the PIA terms meets the obligations of the Act, where the new PIA regime stipulates that all existing oil prospecting licenses, OPLs, and oil mining leases, OMLs, would be automatically converted to petroleum prospecting licenses, PPLs, and petroleum mining leases, PMLs, upon their expiration. Come on, let's go. Tomorrow. The enactment of the Petroleum Industry Act PIA 2021 marks a significant turning point in the history of Nigeria's oil and gas sector. The landmark legislation has the potential to address long-standing challenges and usher in a new era of reforms, transparency, and sustainable development for the industry. Now, one of the reforms introduced by the PIA is the new NNPC Limited. That's Nigeria's state-owned oil company. With me tonight is the head of sustainability departments, corporate strategy and sustainability division of NNPC Limited, Mr. Chinedu Igwe. He'll be discussing the new NNPC Limited under the PIA 2021, exploring the company's sustainability initiatives the alignment with the Act, as well as challenges, and NNPC's plans for the future. Thank you so very much for joining us on the program. 
Thank you, Elsa. It's my pleasure to be on the set. Right. Now, so much has been said on this program about NNPC's um, sustainability initiatives. But for a clearer perspective, could you give us an overview of these initiatives and how they align with NNPC's overall strategic goals? The NNPC Limited you see today is an NNPC that has crafted under the provisions of the PIA is so that it will be a sustainable company. Right. On the environmental sustainability, is looking at how we manage the environment in a responsible manner. Sure. And then you have also the social, the social sustainability that looks at our impact of our operations within our social environment and is securing the social right to play. All of this is what NMPC Limited, thanks to the great leadership of the and the dynamic leadership of um, our G current um, group chief executive officer, Mr. Miller Carey, who in driving in, in crafting the strategy with the support of the executive and the board, you know, came up with a strategy that incorporates all these elements of the, of the um, sustainability of the PIA into the elements of the corporate strategy of NNPC mm -hmm. and crafted that in the logo of NNPC. So the embodiment of the vision, the mission, and the logo of NNPC speaks to what NNPC sustainability is. Okay. So if you take a look at the logo of NNPC, it has four distinct colors that you have there. Right. So one color is the red. Red speaks to oil. The yellow, yellow speaks to gas. Then we talk about our gas. Gas, we've said, um, is the transition um, fuel because gas has a lower carbon footprint than oil. Then we talk about the green and the deeper green. These are carbon neutral fuels that we're also looking at. And based on the decarbonization strategy of NMPs, we will be looking into things around hydrogen and carbon, uh, carbon capture, utilization and storage also as part of energy that we'll be implementing. And this is not, um, this is also embedded in, our, in the way we run our corporate strategy because we have the NMPC New Energy now that is looking at newer streams of um, um, low, cleaner energy okay. and also decarbonizing our operations. That's interesting, but what are the key um, environmental, social and governance priorities of NNPC and how are they being tackled? These targets are driven by provisions of the PIA, provisions of the Climate Change Act, and also inter uh, leading practices. And in addition, our commitments to like the oil and gas decarbonization charter, um, you have um, the climate change is drawing from the Paris Agreement and in recent times, the what you call the UA consensus. We are committed to the net zero goal of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now for NNPC, staggering this commitment to the oil and gas decarbonization charter, we have to reduce our scope one and scope two emissions by uh, to, um, to reducing to a near zero by 2050. Okay. And then we're also committed to reducing our methane emission by 2030 to near zero by 2030. Then we're also reducing our flares by 2030, uh, zero routine flares by 2030. Then we're also committed to driving in our own operations, utilization of renewable energy in our op operations to reduce our own carbon footprint as a business. I know that um, the Petroleum Industry Act plays emphasis on um, host community development. You know, so as a corporate entity, I mean, how is NNPC engaged and supporting the communities that they operate on, particularly because of the impacts that they have on those communities? Thanks. You know, prior to the PIA, NNPC, through its joint venture operations and in our activities, has been so concerned with the environment. You had the global MOUs that we had. And the global MOUs, under the global MOUs, we have community projects that you have to handle as part of what we do. So NMPC has always been a responsible company. The PIA takes it up a, a, a notch higher down that brings a collaboration between the operators of the industry and the community through okay. the host community development trust funds, where oil companies are meant to set aside 3% of their operating expense, you know, to in, in a certain fund which will be assessed by those communities to develop their communities. Now, so those these are things that are offshoot of the PIA, which are still being developed and the accounts are being set up for those funds because those funds requires both the operator and the community to manage those. Now, while this is going on, NMPC through its NMPC foundation, it's and in collaboration with its JV partners in where, in where they have uh, joint operations, are already carrying out are still embarking on social projects. We've had like trainings for community people in the community, empowering them with skills, providing healthcare, access to healthcare, providing maternity supports, providing educational supports in some of these communities. So, so what are some of these challenges and how are you uh, addressing them or how have you overcome them over time? As a responsible company, we've been very conscious of the environment. 
we've carried out gas projects to ensure that we don't flare out our operations. Okay. We've always been engaging community, but now sustainability is the word. How then are we then driving sustainability? So sustainability, to drive sustainability excellence is not just about carrying out those projects. It's about being accountable in carrying out those projects and also carrying out those projects with strong engagement with stakeholders. So you're not doing a project that does not touch lives. It's doing a project that touched lives and the people were able to tell you that these are the projects. So what are the way, what are then those things that we have to put in place? One is data to drive reporting. Data is key. So NMPC needs to then, we need to then, in driving sustainability excellence, we then need to put in place the data to tell people the progress you've made. Right. And you can go to any site, click on that site, and look at the success we have achieved as a company in those goals that we have set, that these are the things we want to do. Now, the other key thing also is stakeholder engagement. And thanks to our corporate communications team, they've been working so hard on that. We have, they have the Twitter handle, the um, social media handles, and then we have a functional email address where stakeholders can reach us and engage with us. And one of the things that he's doing is that we're getting the feedback from stakeholders and using that to meet stakeholders' needs. How does NNPC uh, sustainability strategy compare with international standards and best practices? NNPC is a partner, it's a member of the Oil and Gas Decarbonization Charter. NNPC signed up to the Oil and Gas Methane Partnership, which means that we're conscious about our methane, our methane emissions. NNPC is also a member of the United Nations Global Compact. Now, in crafting a strategy for sustainability, NMPC is able to bring all of these requirements of these global bodies we've signed up to. NMPC is able to bring together these international provisions that have now, global provisions that have been adopted by Nigeria, all right, and, bring, and putting it as part of its strategy to use it to define its sustainability strategy. I'm glad you said that because, you know, the oil and gas industry has been mostly criticized for its environmental impact. But as an energy company, or the country for that matter. I mean, how are you addressing issues of oil pollution, gas flaring, and of course the transition to cleaner en energy sources? Oil and gas has transited greatly. So we've gone from flares, um, flares, heavy flares in operations to reduce flares in most of our operations. We've also gone from utilization of gas. You know. So what you see even under the PIA, you see that the PIA, the PIA has provided greatly, gas flaring becomes now a penalty that is not allow is not allowable deduction against tax. You also see that the PIA provides then um, gas fields that can be given its own sole lease or license to, okay. to for you to produce it. So what that is doing is that it's encouraging the utilization of gas. So as against when you found the oil and gas companies flaring gas or utilizing gas in a way that is not economical, now gas has an economic value. So one, there's an economic drive. Two, the oil and gas, the provisions of the PIA that mandates the setup of environmental funds, the commissioning and abandonment funds, uh, is also what the oil and gas is, is embarking on. Okay. And what it then means is that the oil and gas companies cannot just flare like that. There are penalties to these things that has been embedded in the law. And that's also how the oil and gas companies in Nigeria have, have refined itself. Well, interesting conversation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chinedu Igwe, for joining me on the program. Thank you. Sir. Well, I've been speaking with Mr. Chinedu Igwe, the head sustainability department of a corporate strategy and sustainability division of NNPC Limited. Energy and you continues in a moment. Stay with us. You are still watching Energy and You. Time now for a weekly update on NNPC's war on crude oil theft and pipeline vandalism. The war on crude oil theft is on, and the industry-wide security collaboration 
on hydrocarbon infrastructure continues to record remarkable progress. Between the 7th to the 13th of September 2024, a total of 218 incidences were recorded across several locations in the Niger Delta region from various incident sources. Tantita Security Agency Shell Petroleum Development Company Pipeline Infrastructure Nigeria Limited Maton Engineering Nigeria Limited Oando PLC NMPC Limited Command and Control Centers and Government Security Agencies at Usomini 2 in River State, four illegal pipelines cleverly hidden and connected to a crude oil line were exposed. These pipelines had been siphoning off precious resources from the nation's coal first. Similar illegal operations were uncovered in Aqua Odogwa and Umwajuluki communities. Swift actions from security forces neutralized these illicit connections, preventing further losses. Makeshift refineries used to process stolen crude oil were demolished in an aggressive crackdown. The site in Obibi Ajuloke, Asa, Aqua Ojogwa, Okaki and Umwajuloke once fueling criminal enterprises now lay in ruins. Large reservoirs of stolen crude were found in Bielsa and River States, hidden in places like Oporomo 4 and Egi 3, while illegal storage sites were discovered in Obuzo Abia states and Eket Akwaibom states. Here, crude was concealed in polythene bags awaiting distribution to the black market. On land, security personnel intercepted several trucks and vehicles carrying stolen crude oil at key locations Ndokwa, Jeremy II, Jerry in Delta State. Arrests were also made in Uyo Akwaibom State and Ebocha in River State with the drivers handed over to relevant authorities for further investigation. On water, security personnel seized wooden boats commonly used for transporting stolen crude oil in Ukwa and Ubozo Abia states, as well as in Obodo Delta states. The incidents were spread across different corridors, 32 in the Western Corridor, 61 in the Central Corridor, 77 in the Eastern Corridor, and 48 in deep blue water. In total, 35 suspects were arrested during this period, all of whom have been handed over to government security agencies for further investigation. For NMPC Limited, there is no backing down on the war on crude oil theft until the menace is eradicated for good. To report crude oil theft or suspicious activities within your area, call the numbers on your screen now or send an email to report at stopcrudetheft.com. Handsome rewards await the whistleblower. Do your part. Report oil theft today. are the largest single asset holder in Africa's oil and gas industry and poised to be the dynamic global energy company of choice. We are constantly innovating to be the prime company for energy sufficiency. We are NNPC Limited. Energy for today. Energy for tomorrow. Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, is celebrating more than six decades of exceptional achievements and success. In its 64 years of existence, OPEC has championed cooperation and dialogue among all stakeholders to achieve stability in the global oil market, address challenges through inclusive and realistic approaches, and ensure oil continues to support the development of nations and prosperity of mankind. Well, Secretary General of OPEC, His Excellency, 
Ifem Al Gais reflects on the organization's success in this speech with a special message to Nigeria as OPEC marks the 64th anniversary. Your Excellencies, the great people of Nigeria, today we proudly celebrate the 64th anniversary of OPEC's founding. I would like to recognize firstly His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the esteemed President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as well as His Excellency Senator Heineken Lokpobiri, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Oil and Head of Delegation to OPEC, and Ambassador Gabriel Tanimu Aduda, Governor for OPEC, and Minister Mili Kiari, National Representative, Group CEO of NNPC. We must recognize the immense contributions of Nigeria and all our member countries. All of these members of the OPEC family have played a key role in advancing the goals of this organization. To all of you, we say thank you very much. This day, the 14th of September, which has been designated as OPEC Day, provides a perfect opportunity to reflect on and remember OPEC's remarkable journey from its founding to its present. While acknowledging past glories is important, it is also crucial to look ahead and anticipate what is to come. In this regard, I truly believe that this organization has its greatest days ahead. Thus, I invite you all to be part of this exciting journey heading into the future. And that's the show this week. Thank you for being a part of it. If you missed previous episodes, you can catch up by scanning the code on your screen now. And remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get updates on the activities of NNPC Limited. I'm Egusa Igumbo. See you again soon.